Statues that could rewrite history have been found in Italy. A sanctuary of Poseidon has been found in Greece, and the face of an 18th century vampire has been revealed in the US. Winged cars of the Indians and dinosaurs in Russia. See what other interesting things archaeologists have prepared for us in this video. Hi, friend, you're on the Kurtop channel. The Face of the Vampire of the 19th Century In Connecticut, in the United States, in 1994, archaeologists discovered the skeleton of a man in a coffin, engraved with the characters JB55. It would seem nothing unusual. Such remains are found around the world a lot. It's just that his story is very interesting. Back in the 1800s, this farmer man was considered a vampire. In life, he had unusually yellow skin, red eyes, and his mouth was bloodstained from coughing. Only now scientists have been able to study the skeleton and conduct DNA analysis. The farmer's name was John Barber and he was 55 years old when he passed away. After analyzing the ribs, it was possible to find out that he suffered from a chronic infection of the lungs, which at that time was the usual. An 18th century doctor wrote about this man like this. The forehead was covered with drops of sweat, cheeks bright crimson, sunken eyes, respiration fetid, frequent and labored. The remains in the coffin lay just as unusually, in the skull and crossbones position. Such a position was not accidental at that time, it was believed that because of such an arrangement, a man could not rise from the dead. The events that led this man to be considered a vampire are also very interesting. There is a story about the famous Jewett City vampires. In the same city of Griswold, where this farmer was found, there was a suburb of Jewett City, where a certain family lived. Over the course of nine years, several men in this family died of tuberculosis, and at some point, their youngest son became infected. The survivors saw they were being chased by vampires. They decided to dig up all their buried relatives and burn them. After some time, the child recovered and they considered that with the help of such a rite, they got rid of the vampire curse. Such stories happen when people self-medicate or when medicine is poorly developed. For some time, scientists axiomed the bodies really Really believe that the remains belong to ancient vampires. The presence of certain characteristics, for example, bleeding from the mouth and swelling of the chest, was mistaken for signs of life, although in our time it is known that these characteristics are associated with the natural process of decomposition. Scientists conducted a DNA analysis and tried to recreate the face of John Barber using artificial intelligence. The results showed that, that he had fair skin, brown or hazel eyes, brown or black hair, and sparse freckles. From the vampires of the Middle Ages, let's move on to more ancient finds. Sanctuary of Poseidon of Samos at Samicum in Greece, in a thicket of wild olive trees, archaeologists have found a possible sanctuary of the Samian Poseidon. Archaeologists have unearthed the foundation of the rather large structure 9.4 meters wide and 0.8 meters thick. The remains are preliminary dated to the 6th century BC. According to ancient sources, the sanctuary of Poseidon at Samicus was an important religious center in the region for the six cities of Triphylia. The place where the potential temple was found coincides with the text of the ancient Greek geographer Strabo, who wrote about the temple in his work Geography. Samicum, or as it also called Samicon, was an ancient city in the middle and late periods of Hellas. Before starting excavations, archaeologists spent several years measuring and analyzing the soil. Based on geophysical anomalies at the site, a building at least 28 meters long could be calculated, which had two interior rooms. The elongated large building cannot be anything other than an archaic temple located on the site of the sanctuary of Poseidon. A large marble vessel found here imitating a bronze cup is typical of the inventory of the sanctuary and is dated to the archaic period. This discovery sheds new light on the political and economic significance of the Amphictyony of the Triphelian cities in the 6th century BC, when the sanctuary of Poseidon at Semekin served as the center of their religious and ethnic identity. It is impossible to talk about ancient Greece in a video without mentioning ancient Egypt. Tunnel to Cleopatra's Tomb Legends have been circulating around the tomb of Cleopatra for dozens or even hundreds of years. 
Every archaeologist wants to find a mysterious tomb. There are many legends about it, but no one has ever seen it. But perhaps now, the very long-awaited event will happen and the discovery of this tunnel will be the very key to the tomb of Cleopatra. At a depth of 13 meters under the temple of Taposiris Magna, a tunnel carved into the rock was discovered. It is assumed that it is this tunnel that will lead archaeologists to the place where Cleopatra and her beloved Mark Anthony are buried. The giant one and a half kilometer tunnel, about two meters high, resembles the Greek tunnel of Evipalinus on the island of Samos. This tunnel is included in the list of the most important engineering structures of the classical world. The Temple of Taposiris Magna, whose name means the Great Tomb of Osiris, is located near the Egyptian city of Alexandria, which was the capital of the country in ancient times. Historians claim that Cleopatra planned to be buried with her lover in the Temple of Taposiris Magna in order to reproduce the ancient legend of Isis and Osiris. According to all sources, with a high degree of probability, the remains of Cleopatra should be in this temple, and if this really turns out to be true, then this will become the greatest archaeological discovery of the 21st century. This is not just a tomb, this is the possible burial place of the last pharaoh of ancient Egypt, Cleopatra, ruled from 51 BC to 30 BC. Archaeologists have also found several important artifacts inside the temple, including coins with images and names of Queen Cleopatra, Alexander the Great, and a number of headless statues, as well as statues of the goddess Isis. Let's hope that very soon we will find out the exact burial place of Cleopatra and Mark Antony. And while archaeologists are trying to make one of the most important discoveries, we will go to Peru, where even more interesting finds await us. 3,000 years of history under, under our feet. An amazing find was discovered by Carlos Lange, one of the workers in Lima, Peru. While digging a trench for a gas pipeline on the outskirts of the city, he came across a human skull. Such finds are not uncommon in this place, but for a worker, it seems strange. He told his boss, who immediately called archaeologists to this place, it was the right decision. In just one week, archaeologists managed to find the remains of 21 people, including 8 children. According to preliminary data, they lived 600-800 years ago. As it turned out, the burial was interesting from the point of view of archaeology. Nearly all were buried in the classic pre-Columbian style, bound bodies seated in a fetal position and wrapped in layers of cloth. Around them were ceramic dishes. One person was lying horizontally on the reed, previously he was a warrior. Next to him were the remains of a two-year-old child. The vast metropolis of Lima, with a population of 10 million, is home to over 1,100 archaeological sites. Unfortunately, the poverty of the country does not allow protecting all objects located in Peru from vandals and destruction. This region has been inhabited for over 3,000 years. John Valerial, another worker on the side, said that when he was a boy, he dug graves in pre-Columbian burial grounds in his village in northern Peru, near the city of Chicleo, working in teams of 10 with other people. They found various masks, shell necklaces, golden pectorals, and erotic-themed ceramic sculptures. All this was sold for a penny. After all, they did not understand what value these artifacts had. Thus, the rich and very interesting history of the ancient Incas and Maya was lost. How many objects were destroyed due to mass development in this region? How many artifacts were lost and sold on the black market? The black market sells not only artifacts, but also the bones of ancient animals. It's good that the next find fell into the right hands. Russian Dinosaur Back in 1982, while walking along the banks of the Volga, a Soviet scientist discovered several stone bones. These were the vertebrae of a giant dinosaur that had grown into the stone. It took several years to get them out of there. Another scientist identified these vertebrae as a sauropod. These are those giant dinosaurs that had huge necks. The most interesting thing is that it was only the third such dinosaur discovered in Russia in history. Paleontologists have determined the relationship of this giant with the South American titanosaurids, and these monsters at one time gave birth to the largest dinosaurs in the history of the planet, the Argentinosaurs. Scientists were able to determine that this representative is one of the first titanosaurids in the world. He walked the planet 130-136 million years ago. The next task for scientists was 
was to determine the size of the giants. They did this on the basis of two vertebrae of other dinosaurs of this genus, and they got a giant 17 meters long and weighing 17 tons. Unfortunately, this is not the largest representative of its family, but one of the largest dinosaurs found in Russia. These dinosaurs ate stones for better digestion of food. They are also called gastrolith. Typically, such dinosaurs walked in herds, so archaeologists have a chance to find even more of these rare specimens. Very logical, but the next find, which I will tell you about, was found in Italian thermal bath. Bronze statues in Italy this is a very important exceptional find, said team leader Jacopo Taboli. According to him, this find will rewrite history and about 60 experts from all over the world are working on it. In the thermal bath in Tuscany, Italy, archaeologists have found more than two dozen bronze statues that date back to ancient Roman times. Their age is approximately 2,300 years. Previously, the statues adorned the sanctuary, after which, during the ritual, they were immersed in thermal waters. Thus, the statues are perfectly preserved. Although, I think the goal in the ancient world was something else and to save the statues for their descendants. The statues were covered with 6,000 bronze, silver, and gold coins. Archaeologists over the past three years have discovered 24 large and several smaller statues. All of them were made of bronze, although they were usually made of terracotta. This only indicates that they were brought here from an elite settlement. Such finds increase the flow of tourists. After all, people are always interested in learning more about our history, especially when we have the opportunity to touch ancient objects that are more than 2,000 years old. After the restoration, the statues will be sent to the museum where anyone can see them and the place of their discovery will become a visited place for tourists who want to touch ancient Rome. And the next discovery has been haunting scientists for many years. Winged Cars of the Indians Earlier, I already said that many artifacts are lost in the black markets immediately after they are discovered or are transferred from hand to hand. In this case, the chain of their discovery is lost. After that, it becomes difficult to establish the origin of these objects, the place in which they were found, and the people to whom they belonged. In our case, we will talk about the golden birds that were found in the burials of the Tehrana Indians. Scientists are not exactly sure who owned the winged cars. According to the logic of archaeologists, what is in the burial place belongs to that nationality. But in this case, there is an opinion that these birds were found somewhere long ago by the Tyrone tribe or accidentally dug up, after which they gave these objects some kind of symbolism. The Tehrans were a highly developed civilization before the Spaniards arrived and killed everyone. How many cultures were destroyed by these conquerors? But let's not talk about the bad. The Tyrone own Indian tribe was not seen in connection with UFOs. More precisely, in their culture, before the discovery of these birds, there were no more symbols, tools, or clothes that would be similar in type. I want to say that the winged cars of the Indians found in their graves had nothing to do with their culture. These golden figurines belong to another civilization of that time or even older. It's honestly even difficult to determine what these shiny figures look more like, either a bird or an airplane. But in any case, this tribe did not have any cult of birds, let alone aircraft, and triangular wings are strange even for Europeans. Such wings have been used for less than a hundred years in jet military technology, and this is definitely unlikely to have been used 500 years ago. Perhaps these are figurines of some deities, but questions also arise here. Usually always the deities eventually become more like people, and here the figurine looks very strange and has absolutely nothing to do with a person. How would you explain this artifact? I am sure that among you there are people who can explain the origin and the most important purpose of these objects. Objects. And after you write your opinion, I will tell you about the next mysterious find. A said disk of death. Another find that has been studied by archaeologists and scientists from all over the world for more than 50 years. It was discovered on the territory of the well-known ancient city of Teotihuacan in 1963. They discovered it and no one knows what to do with it next except to put it in the museum. Historians also cannot understand what the ancient Aztecs did with this disc. The name Disc of Death was derived not only from the skull placed in the center of the disc. The Aztecs performed various terrible rites 
rites during their rituals. In this case, we can assume that the disc was used during the sacrifices, and most likely, the disc was reusable because the processing of the stone and the detailing of the drawing is amazing even in our time. It is believed that not even people but some creatures participated in the processing of the stone. But this is just the opinion of some scientists. I think that the stone was processed by masters of their craft. After reconstruction of the disc, it shows a direct resemblance to the halos depicted on icons with Christian saints. This gave rise to the assumption that both the disc and the icon paintings demonstrate not some kind of abstract halo of holiness, but a technical design, such as a spacesuit helmet. Because of this, an opinion appeared about some other forces that made the disc. Even on some icons at one time, objects resembling flying saucers were seen. Teotihuacan, where the disc of death was discovered, in Aztec means the place where the gods descend from heaven. In this regard, this place is symbolic and, according to a number of historians, aliens landed here in antiquity and the road of the dead leading to the Pyramid of the Sun was a runway. Always when it is not possible to explain some artifact or event, the most crazy ideas come to mind. I hope that archaeologists will be able to find something that can explain the real purpose and origin of the Aztec death disk. Have you ever wondered what else destroys ancient finds? What destroys historical monuments? The stories and legends about King Arthur are so embellished that they are more like a myth than a real character in the history of England. However, the medieval writer Geoffrey of Monmouth claims that King Arthur existed and was born at Tintagel Castle in Cornwall. This unique castle was built on the rocks, but due to climate change, it is gradually being destroyed. Erosion was a problem in the 14th century, but in recent years, soil destruction has accelerated significantly. Specialists in historical monuments and buildings in England are already collecting donations for the restoration and salvation of the castle. According to their statement, by 2100, the sea level in this place will rise by a meter, and then the ancient castle will disappear, and with it, the story of King Arthur. Unfortunately, this is not the only object of historical value that may disappear without a trace. It is good that the existence of our channel is not affected by climatic features. After all, you can watch it from anywhere in the world. And by the way, we could conduct a census of viewers. Write in the comments from which city and country you watch my videos. This will be considered a kind comment under the video. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone!